Hi everyone, it's Stephanie with Lumeria Stars. So welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of decks, a few books too, that came to me um, pretty much over the summer. So a lot of these decks have been sent to me for review and um, I wanted to share them. I have so many that this is gonna be a two part video. So this is part one um, and we've got a mix of both um, indie decks and mass market. So let's just get into the decks because I know that's why we're all here. That's what we're excited to see. I'm gonna take a sip of my uh, tea here. I've got like a peach ginger tea lovely and cozy um okay so let's see here i have one two three four five six seven eight i have nine decks to share um and let's just these are all gonna be first impressions because i haven't worked with anything yet so let's just get into it so the first deck that was sent to me um this is the disney villains tarot deck and guidebook this is um an insight editions deck and this is all done in the style of these like Funko, um, I guess like Funko inspired art, which is kind of like what these look like. And I've seen them before. I'm not like well versed in like what like I think it's like Funko Pop art, um, but I think the artwork is adorable. So I'm just going to like read what the back says here. It says, let Maleficent, Captain Hook, and other classic baddies guide your tarot practice with the only official tarot deck featuring Disney's most wicked villains, now with the all-new Funko-inspired art. Disney's iconic villains have taken over tarot in this dastardly take on the traditional 78-card deck, featuring the notorious near do wells from classic animated films like 101 Dalmatians, Aladdin, Sleeping Beauty, and more. This new Funko-inspired tarot deck reimagines Cruella de Vil, Jafar, Maleficent, and the whole Motley crew in original illustrations based on classic tarot iconography. So let's take a look at this. I know there is another villains deck, and I think it is by um, Insight Editions. And, you know, I love Disney. I'm not like a Disney... Mm, adult or Disney freak, <laughs> but I do love Disney just like as part of my childhood. So we're just going to like, I don't think I'm going to go through every card, but we're just going to get a flavor of what the deck looks like. So again, these are all villains. Um, we've got Maleficent here. I do like this artwork. I think it's really cute um, and fun. The Cruella de Vil. And some of these, like, off the top of my head, I'm not going to know who they are. So what we'll do is I'll shuffle this and just, like, pull a card and see kind of how the guidebook reads. But I can see someone who is a big Disney person, this being a really fun deck to use, especially if you like this, like, Funko-style artwork that I believe that's Ursula the Sea Witch. Love her. She's probably one of my favorite villains. Okay, so it looks that was the major. So let's see if this is a pippish deck or not, because I do know a lot of Insight Edition decks are like that. So we've got our court cards. Okay, so it looks like it's slightly pippish, but we do have some illustrations, which is nice because I don't like when they're like really lazy pips. But I can see how these work. Right, let's skip through a little bit. Okay, we're in the swords. These look a little pippish. There is some type of illustration here. Oh, I love this Queen of Cups cards, not gonna lie. And the cups look a little pimpish as well. Could have definitely used a little more of like scenic illustrations here. I'm a big fan of Ursula, so I do like that too. 
Okay, so let's just see what the guidebook looks like for those of you who kind of want to get a flavor of the deck. So these um, guidebooks are nice. So we go into the majors, we get a full like color illustration and we get the um, like kind of like the write up of the character and upright and reverse meaning. So we get that for um, the majors and then the minors, we still get an upright and reversed which is nice. So let's just, um, let's just like shuffle and pull and I'll read from the guidebook and we'll see kind of how that reads. Get a little flavor of what this deck is all about. So let's see. Oh, look at that. I got nine of cups. That's a good sign. That's kind of, uh, I love that card. Okay, so let's read what the Nine of Cups has to say. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and read it. So upright, this tarot card is a very positive sign of success. Your wishes are being granted, your lucky stars have aligned, and things are finally falling into place. It's time to enjoy yourself. And it says reverse, the Nine of Cups is a call to reevaluate your motivations. Don't worry so much about impressing others. Lasting happiness comes from authenticity and staying true to yourself. The people who are supposed to be in your life will appreciate you just as you are. So that's nice. Let's read um, Let's like read a major card. So let me flip through and find one. And just get a little flavor of how that reads. So you know what? Let's just go full out Ursula. So let's read how the moon reads. Okay. Oh, wait, that's not Ursula. Oh, my goodness. So this is, I don't know how to pronounce that. Is this a Disney movie? I don't know that well. Is this the Emperor? Wait. Okay. It says, oh, my gosh, I hate pronouncing words that I don't know. So this character serves as a longstanding advisor to Emperor Cuzco. So is this the Emperor's... Um, what movie is that, you guys? What movie? What movie? Hold on. Is that The Emperor's New Groove? Is that a movie? Is that a Disney movie? Not one of the ones I watched when I was younger. Um, anyway, so it says here, um, when she is unceremoniously ousted from her position, she schemes to take his place as ruler of the kingdom. The moon represents hidden agendas, betrayal, and secrets, and it warns that there's more going on than meets the eye. So upright, Emperor Kuzco, Kuz <laughs> I hate that I don't know how to say that, is too self-absorbed to notice Yzma's obvious attempts to steal his throne when the moon tarot card is drawn it's a wake-up call advising you to pay attention don't take things at face value now investigate contracts deals transactions and opportunities carefully use your intuition and if any hunches or gut feelings arise trust them and it says here for reverse the more obsessed she becomes with taking the throne from the emperor the more nonsensical and desperate her plans become are you getting carried away and making things more complicated than they need to be? The moon reverse advises you to center yourself and restore balance to your inner world. Your goals are ambitious and you'll have more success if you pursue them strategically and keep your wits about you. So clearly, I don't know all my Disney characters. That's a movie I'm not like familiar with. That's not one I watched um, growing up. Let's just, uh, let's see here. What's one that I am familiar with? Let's do Maleficent. So let's find her. I loved Sleeping Beauty as a kid. So let's see if I can find that card. And I think this deck is fun, even if you're not like, you know, crazy Disney person, like know the ins and outs of every single movie. I certainly don't. Um, but I do love the Disney movies that I grew up with. All right, so I'm going to read about the High Priestess. So it says here, the High Priestess is a secretive, intuitive figure whose power comes from deep within her own subconscious. Like Maleficent, she is sophisticated, calculating, calculating, and a magical force to be reckoned with. 
So upright, the High Priestess Tarot card is a call to look deeper. You may not be seeing a situation, friendship, or relationship in your life for what it really is. What is your intuition telling you? Take inspiration from Mysterious Maleficent and embrace solitude to ruminate on this predicament. Consider it carefully, for there are for there is more going on than meets the eye. So reversed, uh, the High Priestess represents a lack of clarity that leads to confusion and insecurity. To regain self-confidence, channel Maleficent's determination and poise. Square your shoulders, stand tall, and remind yourself of your fierce inner power. While your true form may not be, fear be a fearsome dragon, trust that you have the strength it takes to cut through the chaos and come out on top. So... I really like this artwork. Um, I'm going to have to like Google like what some of these characters are because just upon like first glance, I don't know necessarily all of these characters. I really only know the Disney movies that I watched when I was a kid. And then as I got older, I didn't really keep up with a lot of movies. Um, so... I, I just think this is a fun deck. I think if you are a Disney person, you will love it. And even if you're not and you're just like a Disney appreciator and you like the movies that you watched as a kid, I still think this is a fun deck. So that is the first impressions of the Disney Villains Tarot Deck and Guidebook. And also I wanted to say I'm not going to go through like every single deck and card. So if there are any decks here that like you want to see a deeper dive definitely leave a comment down below and I'm happy to do like a, a full video walkthrough and like a deeper dive of any specific deck you might want to see. So again, just let me know. Okay, so going off of this Funko style artwork is um, Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. So I know um, Inside Editions also has a deck already um, in a different style artwork. This one is in the Funko style artwork and I love this movie, so I'm pretty excited about this one. So it says here, let the citizens of Halloween Town guide your tarot practice with this new sumptuously illustrated Funko edition of the illustrated tarot deck inspired by the classic animated film, Disney Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. The iconic holiday film, Disney Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas is now a Funko tarot deck and guidebook um, blah, 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 features all your favorite characters from Jack Skellington to Oogie Boogie to Sandy Claus himself in original Funko style illustrations based on classic tarot iconography. So this is a movie that is one of my favorites. So I'm pretty excited to see this one. So we're going to take a look at this. I love this cutesy art style, like of the Funko art. Um, so yeah, we're just going to flip through here. Got Sally. This is so cute. I'm definitely going to use this one um, this October. Like I, I know all these characters because um, I watched this movie so many times as a kid, even as an adult. So I'm pretty excited Oops, to work with this. And um, I'm curious to see how the guidebook reads. We've got Zero the dog, so cute. Aww. Oh, I like that with all the doors. Okay, so now we're in the, um, the miners. So we've got the suit of candles, which I'm guessing is wands. And we'll see if this is really pippish. It, it kind of is. Not going to lie, but I do like the, the characters that we see here. I could work with this just because it's so cute. So King of Presents, I'm guessing, is Pentacles. I could also use this deck during Christmas time, which is fun. Cute, cute. Needles, I'm guessing, is swords. So these are, you know, pretty pippish, but some of them do have full characters, which I like. And potions, I'm guessing, is cups. Cute. 
I said I wasn't going to flip through all this, and here I am. Okay, so let's give this a shuffle. I'm just going to pull a random card, and then I will read from the deck. Ooh. Of course, the Empress popped out, so we're going to read that one, but let me pull another one. got the king of potions so let's read who these characters are i don't quite remember who that is okay so it says here the empress is a maternal nurturing figure who enjoys self-indulgence and life's creature comforts our empress is the corpse mom who is often seen leading her child on a leash oh okay i do remember her and it says here upright this is a call for compassion being patient and kind with yourself and others will get you further than any other approach now is a great time to nurture and indulge your inner, indulge your creative impulses and staying grateful will help you keep a positive, healthy outlook. Reversed, are you being too hard on yourself? You may have been feeling self-critical lately, but beating yourself up about perceived failures and flaws won't help. Be patient and give yourself room to make mistakes that are learning opportunities. Okay, so I do like that reading. Let's read the King of Potions. Okay. So it says here, um, upright, the king of potions is a loyal, sensible problem solver. Embody the energy of the king of potions by maintaining a healthy balance between the head and heart. Be logical, but stay compassionate and kind. So I don't really know if that's, I don't remember that as a character. It might just be like a towns person. Um, and then reversed, uh, the king of potions is emotionally turbulent and his intense, unpredictable unpredictable moods can harm those around him if you're feeling overwhelmed try working through your feelings in healthy ways take care to anticipate your responses to make sure your feelings don't get the better of you so i am excited about this one just simply because i do love this movie a lot and i love halloween so i think i'm definitely going to work with this one specifically in october and probably even a little in december too so let me know what you think of this deck. If you're a fan of um, The Nightmare Before Christmas, are you excited about this one? Do you have the other one? And what are your thoughts on that? All right, so let's move on. Let me take a sip of my tea. I should move faster so this isn't like the longest video ever. Okay, so the next deck is the Queen of the Sun Oracle by Stacey DeMarco. So this is kind of like a companion deck or sister deck to the Queen of the Moon Oracle, which I used to have. I got it in a trade. I used it. I really enjoyed it. And then I just felt like my time was done with it. So I um, traded it to someone else. So I no longer have it. But um, that one was working with uh, the moon energy and the moon phases. And this one is working with the sun, which I think is so interesting. So I just want to read the back here. It says, a sister deck to the Queen of the Moon Oracle. This oracle focus focuses on solar power, powerful, extroverted, fertile, and expansive. It details cycles and seasonal aspects with a spectacular 11-year solar cycle to observe as well as the cycles of the Celtic wheel of the year and phenomenon like eclipses and flares. It also features the wisdom of ama amazing goddesses and gods of the sun from all over the world. So I'm really curious about like sun cycles because I don't really know about the sun cycles this is the inside of the box which is really pretty draw down the power of the sun and let's take a look at the backs which is really pretty and how many cards is in this did it say uh 44 cards that's gilded and gold so let's just take a look this is um again the same artwork from the queen of the uh, moon oracle so it looks like we have they're numbered, and then we've got solar cycle one and a keyword. So purpose, I won't flip through all of these. Solar cycle two, action, resilience, focus. Really curious to work with sun energy, which I've really not done. I feel like the moon is the energy a lot of us in like the divination and tarot and witchy community really work with, but we're really, I don't, see a lot of people working with sun energy necessarily so that's just like super interesting to me oh, I like how this keyword is mental health curious about that one we've got some like um, goddesses here this 
could be a cool deck to work with in the summer. And then we've got some of the Wheel of the Year. Do we have every? Oh, I guess we do. Litha, Lamas, Maybon. Oh, that's cool. Samhain, Yule, Imbolc, Ostara. Very cool. So they have one for each Sabbath. Cool. Okay. So let's just shuffle and we'll do just a sample. I'll read from the guidebook. Feel free to take these readings as yours too. Like if it resonates with you, then it's meant for you. So let's just pull one card and see what comes through. Okay, we've got uh, Bridget, so creation. And let's just read how the guidebook reads. So it's number 19. This is what the guidebook looks like. So it says here, creation is your birthright. All of us create. We don't have to be artists. The more we create, the better we get at it. Trust your intuition and master your craft and joy. Be the inspiration and inspire others. Do not apologize for your creative spirit. Regulate your emotions through creative endeavor. And then we have a like affirmation. I am infinitely creative. And then the write-up here, Bridget is the daughter of Dagda and one of the poets of, I can't pronounce that, and what I love about this Celtic Irish goddess is the breadth of her creative reach. She is the goddess of poets, storytelling, and writing. I did not know that about her. She is a mighty goddess of the crucible of forge and the making of tools and jewelry and metal. She is the goddess of the creation of life itself and the renewal within the land, animals, and people. She appears with a fire flaming above her, head linking her to celestial power and primal creativity. The Festival of Imbolc, which is still celebrated by pagans today, is a time to celebrate the first signs of spring and was considered a festival sacred to Bridget. Herbs that were necessary for heal healing would be gathered and harvested during the time and blessed through ritual in her name. Many celebrations are held around her. Healing wells and springs sacred to her are still used in Ireland. It was said that if you collected the dew that lay upon the grass on Imbolc Morn, you could not get sick or age for another year. Many writers, filmmakers, farmers, and healers still ask for inspiration and healing energy from Bridget. The goddess is still very a very popular deity to honor throughout the world and is to this day the patron saint of Ireland. Her current sanctuary contains a sacred flame and is situated in Kildare. And then we have a companion stone or metal, which is iron. And I guess we get that for each card too, which is cool. So yeah, let me know what you think of this deck. Um, I am excited to work with this. I'm probably gonna use this for journaling, but I think it'll be really interesting to work with some sun energy. And I really love how there's a card for each Sabbath. So when um, I'm filming this as of right now, um, the first week of September, so I can pull the card from Maybon and Samhain and Yule for the rest of the year. So I'll be really interested to see um, how I can like add this into my practice or even use these as altar cards. So really excited to check this one out. Let me know what you think of the first impression. All right. So the next deck we have is uh the lumina tarot let your intuition guide you and i believe this is um a mass market edition of a deck that was once indie and i never owned it from the indie version it says shine a light on your inner self soulful with an earthy yet magical vibe lumina tarot will empower you to trust yourself it acts as a mirror offering self-exploration reflection and confirmation let go of your preconceived ideas and discover your natural intuitive ability. Lean into this feeling as it is from here that you can unfold your own mastery. This isn't a tarot deck that tells you who you are. Rather, it will inspire you to believe in yourself and be the hero of your own life. So let's take a look at this. This is a beautiful holographic box. It's a really nice box. You are what you are looking for. I love that. And we've got a chunky, chunky guidebook, which also love. Okay, so let's see here. These are the backs, very simple, and they're reversible. We've got holographic edges, and we'll just kind of flip through some of the artwork. 
I think this is the creator, um, the Lumina Tarot India version. I think they also created the Connected and Free Oracle, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, which is cool. That was a deck I've always wanted and I, it went out of print. So I don't know if Rockpool is also going to pick up that deck for mass market. That would be really awesome. And I could use them together, but the artwork looks familiar to me. It's really beautiful. And this has a little bit of a pippish feel also a little like, um, Oh gosh, what's that deck? The Wild Unknown. It gives me a little vibe of that too, even though I never owned that deck. I can see some similarities or similar energy. Uh, it looks like the Quartz. We've renamed the page to Maiden. Yeah, this is definitely giving me Wild Unknown similar feels. And let me know if you have the Lumina Tarot Indie and how you like it. I believe it was Indie. I could be completely making that up, but I think if memory serves me, it is an Indie deck and now it's been picked up mass market. I like this Queen of Pentacles. I like this big chair. Okay, so let's give this a shuffle. And just pull a card and we'll see what comes through. And I'll read from the guidebook. Okay, let's see what we have. We have the Five of Pentacles. All right, and this is a beautiful, thick, glossy guidebook. This is what our entry looks like. Uh, Five of Pentacles, learning and growth arise from challenge. You may feel hard times are upon you. Enthusiasm, vitality, and zest for life may be lacking, which may also be reflected in your physical health. You may feel you are not receiving adequate support from friends and family or official channels, leading to anxiety and concerns about how to manage this challenging period. There, is a, there may be a sense of loss in your life loss of a loved one, of money and possessions, or being rejected in some way. It may also indicate spiritual loss or loss of self-connection. Misaligned thoughts may plague you and it could feel as though you are swimming upstream. Do not allow yourself to become stuck within the problem. Watch that you do not feed off negative emotions or energy. Now is the time to choose yourself. Stop looking externally for support, love, nurturing, and care, and begin to tend to yourself in the way you wish others would. Watch that you do not turn to addictive behaviors. You are being called to address what needs to be addressed. Trust that you have the power and skills to move through this period of hardship, coming out on the other side triumphant and all the wiser. Be open to trying alternative pathways. Return to your roots to know what is true to you and start from there. And then I'll read the reversed as well. Good news, this card reverse comes as a warning, guiding you to foresee any potential trials and tribulations, nipping them in the bud before they escalate into a more serious issue. Take note of your internal world, noticing how your inner energy and landscape impacts, creates, and contributes to external in outcomes. There is wisdom and strength in knowing when to let go of something. Loss isn't necessarily bad. I really like that guidebook entry. Um, let's just take a look at this book real quick. I love a good guidebook to me that can sometimes make or break a deck, even if I'm not like completely connecting with the artwork. If there's a good guidebook, um, again, that could be like, it could become a favorite deck of mine. All right, let's see here. Yeah, I think this is, this guidebook is really nice. I like how there's like keywords too, or like a key phrase. Let's see about the author. Yep, I was right. So this is the author of the Connected and Free Oracle as well. And I, I stand by, I believe this was an indie deck first. So that's really cool. 
because I never got to work with the indie deck. So let me know what you all think of this. If you have the indie deck, do you like it? Um, is the artwork different? Because I don't, I don't know. Like, were there any? Did you see any major changes to the artwork? Um, and are you interested in this deck? So I think I'm going to definitely use this um, for my journaling practice because I just really like the way the guidebook read. So we're going to see how this one goes. Um, but I'm excited to take a look at this one. So that is fun. Okay. I have one more mass market deck and then I'll share a few indie decks as well. So this one is the Mystical Healing Oracle by Inna Seagal. It's intuitive guidance to transform your soul. So I'll just read the back here. This is a 36 card deck, which I'm not going to lie. The 36 card decks, I feel like that's a little skimpy. Like I really, at, at the very least, I appreciate when decks have at least 44 cards. But I feel like a lot of these decks are getting kind of small. And the prices, like this is $27. So, you know, that's just my opinion. Okay. It says here, healing everything from fear and anxiety to ancestral patterns and karma. This deck will be one of the most profound and life-changing you have ever encountered. That's a bold statement. It says, propel yourself into your inner life of feelings, soul wisdom, and spiritual evolution with this mystical oracle. Each card's evocative image offers you profound knowledge of self and spirit combined with practical guidance and tools for transformation. You will find yourself more aware, more resilient, and more able to tackle challenges and embrace opportunities. So I know Inna Seagal has created quite a few Oracle decks. I do have um, a few of them as well. So let's take a look. We've got our guidebook here. Let's take these out. And this is kind of like a, a box that the lid is attached. So these are the backs, which are pretty. And they're gilded in blue. So it looks like the artwork is kind of this like vintage. I don't know how you would describe this, but it's got this older quality to it. Some of the keywords, awaken your vulnerability, become more objective, break addiction, contemplate death and beyond, create boundaries. So this is definitely a deck to go deeper, develop stronger connections. Examine your integrity, experience rebirth, explore your ancestry, ground yourself. It's a no, along with it's a yes. Listen to your intuition, love your body. I, I like that card. Minimize guilt, release fear, relieve anxiety relinquish control. I can definitely see some shadow work being used with this deck. Reverse disassociation. Hmm. This is a good one for the darker half of the year. Transform anger. I do dislike when they do the occasional landscape cards. Unlock your heart. You have support. Okay, let's give a little shuffle. Let's see what we got. Okay, we have, it's a no. All right, so let's read. Okay, so it says here, it's time to stop pushing and forcing things to happen. Whatever you are trying to create right now, the timing is off. If you are constantly hitting roadblocks, it's because you are either focusing on the wrong thing or the person you are trying to create a business or a relationship with is either not ready or unsuitable for you at this point. Ooh, these are heavy hitting. You need to relax and stop trying to push and force things to happen. This resistance comes from higher beings because you need to bring the focus back to yourself and become aware of which aspects of you, which aspects of you need to mature. If you continue to push the result, if you continue to push, the result will be harmful. Give yourself time to focus on a new direction. This card also asks you to practice tuning in and saying no to opportunities and requests from others, which compromise your integrity. This could mean letting go of relationships where you are where you're feeling drained. You are also being asked to say no to unhealthy food and drink substances, as well as any activities that waste your time and sap your energy. 
You can say no with a kind heart, knowing that you are looking after yourself. I love that reading. And then there's also, so this is what the guidebook looks like. And there's also a little action piece, which it looks like we have that for every card. So I'll read that. It says, write down any people, situations, or things you, you do that cause destruction in your life. Number them from the most draining to the least harmful. Imagine saying no with a smile. This could be a no to eating unhealthy sugary food or to demanding or to a demanding family member. Also take the time to meditate on what is important to let go of in your life and what you should be focusing on. I love that reading, actually. I'm very excited to work with this deck and I was not expecting that reaction from myself. So um, just a quick look at this guidebook. We do have um, a table of contents to find your card easily, a little introduction, how to use the cards, a few, you know, spreads, taking the next step spread, and then we go right into the cards. And again, each one has like an action, which I really like. And then just about the author and illustrator. Awesome. Okay, I'm excited to work with this for the darker half of the year. So this, again, is also going to go in my um, little basket of um, decks for journaling specifically. So I'm pretty excited about that one. Let me know your, your thoughts on that. But my first impressions are I'm really excited to work with this, get to know her. Okay, we're going to move into the indie portion of this video and I have a few of those. So the next deck um, that made its way to me is the Anthropologist Tarot. So this one, um, it can be found at the anthropologisttarot.com and it says imbued, imbued, imbued? Why can't I say that? <laughs> I can't talk today. With potent iconography and symbols sampled from thousands of years of human history, the Anthropologist Tarot deck is a powerful tool for contemplation, discovery, divination, and manifestation. So this is obviously 78 cards, and it also comes with a guidebook. So we have got a kind of magnetic box, which I do really love. And we'll take a look at the cards here. I love love these backs. These are really cool. And let's take a look at the artwork. So we've got a lot of collage work. I love collage decks when done well. Already I can tell this is like really high quality. We've got some like, I guess like ancient artifacts and artwork and statues and we've made it like modern and funky. So this is really cool. I'm really digging the vibe of this. It's kind of like bridging ancient with modern uh, with, with a very unique artistic flair. Oh, I love these. These are great. Okay, so that was the majors. We're going into the minors. We've got cups. So these are a little bit more pippish, you could say, but we definitely can still get the meaning here. I love how the titles are kind of like embedded into the artwork. That's great. These are so cool. Oh my goodness. Okay, we've got pentacles. So we've got these like hands kind of featured throughout. Really cool. I like that depiction for pentacles, that kind of symbolizing that physical world. This is so fun and vibrant. Got our sword. So we've got, it looks like a lot of like, kind of like ancient swords that you would see like in a museum. And wands, got some bones, we've got some like staffs, 
more bones, some branches of this Queen of Wands is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's give this a shuffle. And then we'll just peek at the guidebook. I haven't even looked at it yet. These are really, these are truly first impressions. I really like the cardstock with this too. I feel like this is an easy shuffle to riffle. Let's see. Kind of throwing cards around but that was a very easy shuffle really feels really nice in the hands okay so let's see what we get here we have pulled the seven of cups so let's just see this is the guidebook it's kind of like staple bound a little bit about the anthropologist tarot deck and this is by uh michael burke studio Okay, so it looks like we really just have like keywords here. So let's see, do we have that for the minors too? We do. So seven of pentacles, upright. The keywords are reflection and evaluation, investment, waiting, and reappraisal. Oh, no, I'm looking at seven of pentacles. So sorry, where's cups? I was gonna say those keywords don't sound familiar to me. Okay, so seven of cups, the upright keywords, choices and options, that makes more sense illusions and confusion, imagination and visualization. The reversed is clear thinking, realistic goals, and wise choices. This deck is awesome. Like I I'm, I think I'm gonna use it this month. Um, just pull a couple just so we see how they look together. These are so funky and cool. Oops. I love these backs. This is just, I don't know. I'm like really digging the vibe of this right now. So yeah, let me know what you think of the Anthropologist Tarot. Um, I'm very excited about this. And I'm going to use this for the month of September. So you'll probably see this in my tarot edit this month. But really excited for this one. And this was sent to me and I'm really excited to, to get to know her. Okay, a few more. Um, this deck was sent to me by Artisan Tarot. So this is the Rider Marseille Tarot deck, which basically marries the Rider Waite Smith and Marseille artwork together. And I actually have a few decks that do that. That might be a really cool like video idea. But um, this is an Artisan Tarot deck. They are known primarily for their Marseille deck, like their Marseille reproduction decks. Um, this is illustrated by Alejandro Rosan, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And um, I also have another deck by him. And this one's sealed, and it looks like I can't open it from the bottom. So let's see. Let me get uh, some scissors. Okay, so I've opened up the seal. So this is deck 483 of 1,000. Okay, so this is the beautiful backs. And this is a very nice linen cardstock. Like this is the kind of linen cardstock I love. We've got just some like, thank you. Oh, we have, we have AE weight here. Oh, and Pixie, that's cute. Okay, so as you can see, um, it is marrying the imagery of the RWS in like a Marseille style. So I think that's really awesome. I love that. I am a RWS girly. So to kind of like reimagine it with Marseille styled artwork um kind of just breathes new life into it for me this is beautiful okay so now we're going into our suit of wands so you can see here it is that classic rws style and composition it's not the marseille style of miners 
as you can see here, we have the full like scenic illustration here, and we're including the traditional Marseille way of um, depicting the wands. So that's just so cool. He did such a great job illustrating this. I love this. Beautiful, beautiful Queen of Wands. Cups. Oh, I love this so much. Got our swords. And you can see here, we've married the two. So we have the Six of Swords of the RWS and then the Six of Swords of the Marseille, which I think is so clever. Really nice way to bridge the two systems together. And there's no guidebook here. I'm just gonna shuffle and we'll just throw down a couple cards and see what it looks like. But I'm really um, happy to have this deck. I love collecting a lot of classic artwork style decks and kind of like reimagined takes on them. Okay, so let's see what we get. Ten of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles. Ten, oh, look at that. Ten, two tens. Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Cups, which is one of my favorites. King of Cups. Oops, we got another one. Queen of Cups because I didn't shuffle great. Look how beautiful. And these backs are to die for. Oh, I love that. I'm very, very excited to have this in my collection. I definitely want to work with it and get to know it more. Let me know what you think of this deck. I'm just really excited um, for this kind of like marrying the two together. It feels like it was done very like harmoniously. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, just to read the back too, it says, this artwork bridges two iconic era, eras of tarot symbolism. So it really does, like, if you're familiar with RWS symbolism, it's going to be in here. If you're familiar with Marseille symbolism, it's going to be in here. And it's all blended beautifully together. What a, an amazing idea. So very, very excited for the Rider Marseille Tarot deck by Artisan Tarot. Okay, two more decks and two books. So this was also sent to me by Artists in Tarot. Um, this is the I, uh, I Ching, and I know nothing about the I Ching. This is the Pie of Panda, Pay of Panda. So I admittedly don't know anything about this. This is really my first I Ching deck I've ever even owned because it was sent to me. Um, so I don't have much to say about it because I'll be very honest, these cards look very intimidating to me. Um, it's, it's just a system that is very, um, unfamiliar to me. It looks like a great, like, study deck and learning deck. But as of right now, these cards mean absolutely nothing to me. I can't read them really intuitively because I don't know what any of this means. There are some keywords here like lake, wind, thunder, mountain. I could maybe work with those, but again, no idea what that means. It does come with a guidebook, so it looks like... This is going to explain how it works. So this is a real, this looks like a really great um like beginner learning deck. So should I feel called to get into the I Ching? I have this deck. It's not something I feel called to at this moment, but um, you know it's always been on my my list of things to learn. So I'm just glad I I have an I Ching deck now, and you can trust that if it was made by um, artisan tarot it's going to be amazing quality which this one is it's that really nice linen cardstock and it just says here uh, z manzilla presents a fresh new take on the ancient divination art of I Ching, with 32 cards that reveal thousands of possible paths beginners and veterans alike can enjoy these cards in both traditional and modern I Ching practices learn and embrace the the pie the pay of panda cute so that is, yeah, that's the I Ching. Let me 
know. Do you do you read I Ching? Like, was this intimidating to learn? Just looking at the cards feels very, very intimidating to me. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, okay, one more deck. Very excited about this. This is the Align Heart Affirmations deck by Kimberly San. This, I believe, is her second edition that was like re reimagined. I know the first edition, um, which I never got, but was always on my list. Um, her the, the font was white on pastel, so I think it was like kind of hard for people to read. But this second edition, I think she switched the text to like a darker um, font or darker color. So it's much easier to read. And this is the 2000, um, yeah, 2024 edition. So it says here, Align Heart Affirmations deck is a collective of 77 gentle yet powerful affirmations for finding safety, deep healing, and self-love. First of all, love how there's 78 cards. That's, or 77 cards. That's amazing. Uh, may this deck serve as the healing balm to your heart, the gentle caress that your spirit needs to feel validated and loved, and in simply existing. Remember, you are enough. This is like, oh my gosh, this is going to be such a healing deck. It comes with a cutie little guidebook right here and a card with some categories. And let's see here. So the categories that were broken into and they're kind of color coded reminders, self-love, healing, connection, and movement. I love that. And it says here, um, the 77 card deck was born out of the cathartic storms that were my dark night of the soul. As I slowly reemerged from the shadows, I relied on these affirmations to anchor myself in truth, courage, resilience, and love. I feel called to share these words with you, hoping they'll create pockets of illumination and inspiration on your journey to find worthiness, healing, and home in your incredible heart. Remember, you are lovable no matter what. Panda hugs Kimberly Sand. That is beautiful. And then this is a really cool feature of this deck. You can see it's like this like kind of holographic heart here. And it says, you'll notice that on each card, there is a layer of transparent holographic foil in the shape of a heart. Place your finger there to download it into your being. Place a rose quartz on top of it for luck and love. And then for more magical rituals, see page five of the guidebook. So like basically if you pull a card, you can put your like, like finger there and kind of like take it in. So you can see every card has a heart. And um, these cards are just so sweet. Oh my goodness. So healing. So nourishing. Beautiful colors. And again, you can see the heart like the kind of glossy heart on each card. I love how there's 77. It is, these are the backs, by the way, holographic, holographic edging. Let's pull one right now for just anything we need to hear in this moment. Oh, I'm dropping cards everywhere. This one came out, so I'm gonna put that there. You are enough. I'll pull two more. Suffering is the absence of love. 